Okay, good afternoon. All right. Uh, I don't know how many of you went for replacement class last week. So if you did went for the replacement class of, uh, you went to other classes, such as Jyoti's classes, then that would be great. If not, I'll see you later at 4.30. All right. So you, if you went to the class for last week, or you went through the solution for last week, or you do your revision of uh, last week yourself, this week tutorial will be a piece of cake. Again, okay, it's just uh, a minor upgrades or minor changes uh, re regarding or changes uh, based on the last week's uh, tutorial. So let's look at the first question together. Okay, this is your this is basically the last tutorial of the whole semester. Okay, look at question number one here. Once we know how to value options on the stock paying a dividend yield, we know how to value options on stock indexes, currencies, and futures. Explain this statement. So basically, what they are telling here, if you know how to do last week tutorial, today's tutorial will be a piece of cake. Uh, that's the direct definition of it. Nah. So what is the changes here? What is the difference between the stock paying a dividend yield and the indexes, currencies, and futures? So here is the answers here, one, two, three. A stock index is analogous to a stock paying a continuous dividend yield. Okay, it's similar to a stock paying a continuous dividend yield in such a way that the dividend yield, all right, in the stock paying dividend, uh, continuous dividend yield, the uh, figure is changed to a dividend yield on the index. So a stock paying a continuous dividend yield, initially it might be written as D, now it's written as the dividend yield on the index, Q. Okay. A currency, okay, but as for a currency, the dividend yield is changed to become a foreign risk-free rate. Again, RF, foreign risk-free interest rate. Okay, so RF, risk of foreign. A futures is analogous to a stock paying a continuous dividend yield, the dividend yield being the risk-free interest rate. So no difference, uh, this is basically D change to R only, same thing. Okay, same thing. So that's why you say that if not to do, do dividend yield, you know how to do the stock indexes, you know, to do the currency and you know to do futures because they are just changing the terms any. Again, the terms changes any. So for following on to question number two here, how does the put call parity formula for indexes, currencies, and futures options different from a put call parity for an option on a non-dividend paying stocks? So if you recall, a few weeks ago, we already do this. This is the non-dividend paying Stocks put call parity formula. C plus stripe exponential uh, discount by RT equals to put price plus spot price. So the only changes here when you're talking about indexes, currency, and future is this SO, this spot at time zero. So the spot at time zero for indexes, it will be changed to spot at time zero discounted by dividend yield times T. Okay? Uh, for currency, you will spot uh, at time zero multiplied by exponential discounted by foreign risk-free rate times T, times T time. And lastly, if it's a future, you're going to change into futures value at time zero exponential discounted by risk-free times T. So this is the changes only. These are the changes according to indexes, currency, and future, okay, compared to the standard non-dividend uh, paying stocks. So this is your indexes. This is your currency. And this is your futures. So no rocket science here. So this is the theory section, all right? So now we move on. Okay, we move on to question number three. Then when later on when we do the calculation, you will see what, what do I mean? What is the difference here? What is the uh, significant difference here that we are talking about? So look at question number three now. Okay. Question number three. What are the advantage of futures option over spot options? So future versus spot options. So there are four different advantages here, which is relevant to us. So number one, the future contract is easier to trade. 
the exercise option, if no, let's say we exercise the option, we do not need to deliver the underlying asset. This one you know, okay. Future options and futures are traded at the same exchange. So it is a convenience thing. But this one is not relevant anymore because now everything is traded via electronic. So you don't need to go to the exchange anymore. Last time is for the convenience purposes. You can trade futures option and futures at the same area. So it's very convenient. Okay, now this one is not relevant to us anymore. All right. And lastly, lower transaction costs. Okay, so futures option versus spot options. The bad three good things is easier to trade, do not need to deliver underlying asset, and lastly, cheaper. Lower transaction costs. So that's it. That's the theory section. Okay, that's the theory section. I hope you guys are okay, no issue. It should be quite straightforward. All right, so for those of you who have no idea at all what is going on here regarding last week, okay, you might not be attending any replacement, but I see there's a... Uh, only 10 of you, so I think the rest already attended. So, uh, and then they are very confident with this week tutorial, so they choose not to come also. So, let's see. Question number four here Calculate the value of a three month at the money European call. So, this question is talking about the call options. Okay, and then the time is three months 3 over 12, 0.25. On a stock index, when the index is at 250, okay. Spot 250. The risk free interest rate is 10%. Risk free interest rate is 0 0.1. Volatility is 18. So, by the way, uh, when you see volatility, you know this is a black skull model. Okay, so basically, today we are talking about the black skull model with the add on version. All right, volatility is 0 0.18, and the dividend yield on the index is. 3%. Q is 0 0.3. What is the value of the corresponding put option? First, you need to find call first. This kind of question, they always give you one thing, they want you to find another thing. Find call, then use put call parity to find put. Okay? So this is what they want you to do. So to do, to find call with the black skull model, because they're given to you volatility, means first thing first, number one, you need to find D1. So D1 is long spot over strike, okay, plus R, para is just plus R plus sigma over two times T, divided by sigma square root of t. This is the actual formula. But because now, this is an indexes. Again, this is a stock index. So we need to minus q. The only difference here is this. Okay? For indexes, minus q. For currency, minus foreign rate, the uh, foreign risk-free. For futures, you minus the uh, risk-free interest. Okay, you minus risk-free interest, also RF. All right, that's the differences here. Okay, so look at this. This formula, put in the formula here. So, strike, you don't know. So, if strike not given to you, you're assuming the other, same. So, ln 250 over 250 plus 0 0.1 minus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.18 square divided by 2 times 0 0.25. Your whole thing, 0 0.18 square root of 0 0.25. So you get your D1. D1, 0 0.2394. After having D1, find D2. So D2 is equal to D1 minus sigma square root of T. So just replace it. 0 0.2394 minus 0 0.18, 0 0.25. You get 0 0.1494. Okay, 
okay, 0 0.19494. So this is a call. So call, you need to find ND1 and ND2. Put also, you need to find ND1 and ND2. I'm going to change to N negative D1 and N negative D2. So ND1, it's N0.2394. So those with calculator, you can get this very easy, normal distribution. Those no calculator one, the manual way, you need to use the normal distribution table to find out the figure. So find N023 is how much first, plus 0 0.94, multiply by N024 minus N023. Why is this so weird? Huh? Why N023 plus 0 0.94 multiplied by these two differences? Because N024 and N023. And your figure here is, you want to find the N, the difference between these two, and it's by 94%. Again, 94% of these two difference. That's why it's 0 0.0094. Okay, 0 0.0094. So just need to know the figure is 0. Point, sorry, this is 23. Okay, so you are finding something in between 0 0.2394. So it's four between these two. Right? So the difference of it multiplied by 0 0.94, you can get the normal distribution. So this figure N023 will give you 0 0.5910. Plus 0 0.94 and 0 0.24 definitely gonna be bigger, so it's gonna be 0 0.5948. You need to get it from the end distribution table. Huh? I hope you know how to do it. Minus 5910. So your MD1 that you finally get is 0 0.5946. Repeat this whole process to find the ND2, which is N01494. Split it into two and zero point one four plus zero point nine four multiplied by and zero point one five minus one four. So the normal distribution figure is zero point five 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 seven. 0 0.5596 minus 0 0.5557. So finally, you get your ND2. 0 0.5594. Okay. So already got all this, ND1, ND2. Now you can find the call. Find call. So the formula for call is this. Spot and D1 mm -hmm. spot and D1 okay exponential QT dividend minus strike and D2 exponential RT to so just replace this figure one by one into it. So the call will be equal to spot of 250. ND1 just now is five five nine four six. Okay, dividend is 0 0.03, T is 0 0.25. Minus 250, 0 0.5594. Okay, the R is 0 0.1. 0 0.25 so you get your call price your call price you get $11.14 next use the put call parity P plus S O E Q T equals to C plus K E R T so you can find the P so just shift everything over P equals to 11.14 plus the strike price is 250 exponential. The R is 0 0.1 times 0 
minus your spot, 250, exponential, negative, dividend 0 0.03, and 0 0.25. So your put price, you get $6.84. So much of work to just find this. So can follow, cannot follow? Understand? Can you all? Uh, actually, if the questions they give you call, then you need to use the put call parity to find the put. They give you put, then you need to find the put call parity to find call. So you can only use the formula P equals to KERT and negative D2 if the question is asking you input. Okay. So if the question asks you to use put first, then you need to use the formula that Elise just uh, put in the chat. But if the question is call, then you use the call formula to find the call, then use the put call parity to find the put. Okay, in fact, it's easier instead of finding the n negative d1 and n negative d2. It's actually almost the same, but, but the question is always structured that way. You find C, if they ask you to find C, then you use the call formula, and then after that, the put, you use the put call parity. If they call you to find put first, then you use the put formula, and then only you use the put call parity to find you see. Okay, so we stay with that. Lah. I think uh, it's being a uh, culture for most of the finance question is being structured that way. Okay, just to test students to know the put call parity. <coughs> okay, so yes, move on. So question five here, all right. Question five here is put already. Okay, then we can use the formula that we propose just now. So calculate the value of an eight-month European put option on a currency with a strike price of 50 cents. Okay, strike price 0 0.5. This whole thing is a put. Okay, the time is 8 over 12. That means 0 0.6667. <laughs> Uh, the current exchange rate, your spot, 0.52. Volatility, 12%. Domestic risk-free rate. Okay, this is a currency. Okay, currency. Uh, domestic risk-free rate means a standard risk-free rate is 0 0.04. Foreign risk-free rate is RF, okay, 0 0.08. What is the value of the corresponding call? Okay, so find the corresponding call with the put call parity. So now we started off to find the D1 first. So D1, dawn, spot over, strike, 0 0.52 over 0 0.5, plus this standard R, okay, domestic R, minus foreign rate, plus your volatility square divided by 2 times 0 0.6667. So this whole thing divided by 0 0.12 square root of 0 0.6667. So you get your D1 of 0 0.1771. D2 is 0 0.1771 minus 0 0.12 square root of 0 0.6667. So you get 0 0.0791. Okay. So now you can opt to find ND1 first or say we N negative D1. Okay. But uh, if you want to be sure, always uh, be safer, you find ND1 first. Again, N negative D1 sometimes will make you a uh, loss, a bit confusing to you. So on N 0 0.1771, split in half is equal to N 0 0.17 plus 0 0.71 of the difference between N 0 0.18 minus N 0 0.17. This will give you 0 0.5703. Okay, the distribution you can count yourself. This will give you the answer. 
n is n d one is equal to zero point five seven zero three. So n d two is n zero point zero seven nine one again split in half. So it's n zero point zero seven plus zero point nine one n zero point zero eight. Minus n zero point zero seven. So the n d two is zero point five three one five. All right. So just to show you lah, okay, you want to find n negative d one and negative d two because you need to find p. All right, n negative d one, it's equals to one minus n d one. So one minus zero point five seven zero three. N negative d two is one minus n d two. This is one minus zero point five three one five. So you get zero point four two nine seven. Zero point four six eight five. So put this into the put formula, okay? Put formula just now. Your friend also show already. P equals to k times n negative t two exponential r t. Okay, minus spot n negative t one exponential is negative. Huh? Is counted. Risk free times time. Okay, so replace it into figure zero point five. N negative d two is zero point four six eight five. Exponential zero point zero four, zero point six 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 seven. Minus zero point five two, four two nine seven. 0.08 times 0.6667. So the P that you get here is 0.0162. So now use the put property to find C. So C equals to P plus S E Q uh, S E R F T. Minus strike R T. Okay, so replace it. Zero point zero one six two plus your spot of zero point five two. Minus your strike. And you get your call. So you get this zero point zero two two three. Zero point zero two two three. So this is for using put as an example. Okay. So no rocket science. Actually very simple. All right. So it's actually very easy. You know to do a black hole model. You need to know to find nd one nd two. So the only conf confusion here is the nd one nd two. You must know how to use the normal distribution table. If you don't want to use normal distribution table, make sure you know use your calculator. Okay, all your calculator can find the normal distribution. Okay, so go and explore your calculator yourself. I couldn't assist you on that because different students have different calculator. Okay, so we are done with question five. We move on to question six. Question six needed you to move around some of the calculation, but it's a very interesting and easy question. So an index currently stands at one five zero zero. So the spot is one five zero zero. European call and put options with the strike price of one four zero zero. Strike price is one four zero zero, and both are the same. Time to maturity is zero point five six out twelve months, and the call now is having a market price of one five four. The put price is thirty four point two five. So respectively, the six month risk free rate is five percent. 
R is 5%. What is the dividend yield? Q. Okay, they want you to find Q. So this one, they give you call put and everything else. So that means they want you to use the put call parity. Okay, put call parity. But since this is a uh, indexes, okay, they talk about the uh, index here. Okay, so it's negative QT. C154 plus strike of 1400 exponential. Uh, R is 0 0.05. T is 0 0.5. Equals to P thirty four point two five plus the spot of one five zero zero exponential negative Q unknown and zero point five ST. Okay, so shift T thirty four point two five over. So you get one five zero zero E negative zero point five Q equals to one five four plus one four hundred is counted by negative zero point zero five times zero point five. Minus 34.24. This one will give you a total number of 1485.18. So the problem here is power. How do we move this off? Very easy. Lon it. Again, lon it. So when you lon it, it becomes 0 0.5 Q. The E go over here, it became a lon of 1485.18 divided by 1500. Negative 0 0.5 Q is equal to negative 0 0.0099. Q is equal to negative 0 0.0099 divided by negative 0 0.5. So negative negative becomes positive, become positive 0 0.0198 or 1.98%. 1 so this is your dividend yield. Okay, this, this is your dividend yield. All right. Looks a bit complicated, but it's quite interesting, right? So you just need to remember when you shift the exponential and the power, it became a lot. To remove the exponential, it became a lot. Okay? Can cannot. I think I hope you guys okay, yeah. Huh? You're alright. Oh, more students came in. Right, so no one are questioning me, so I assume you guys are pretty good. So I'll move on to the final question. Okay, by right is the final question of the semester. But unfortunately, if those who are attending the 430 uh, replacement, then you need to go through some questions again with me. Okay, so question seven here is an index again. Currently stands at 696. Has a volatility of 30%. The risk-free rate is 7%. The index provides a dividend yield, uh, 0.04. Calculate the value of a three-month European put. So this is a put options, nay, and the time frame is three months. So 0.25 again. Okay, exercise price 700. What is the value of a three month call with an exercise of 700 again? Again, they want you to find the call with a put. So you started off as a put, then call. So back to the basic D1 equals to long 696 over 700 plus risk free rate 0 0.07 minus your dividend plus your volatility square divided by 2 times the time. Volatility, square root of time. So D1, 0 0.0868. D2, 0 is 0 0.0868 minus 0 0.3, square root of 0 0.25. So you get negative 0 0.0632. Okay, negative 0 0.0632. So this question is a put. A put means you say we want to find n negative d1. So you find n d1 first, then after that 1 minus n d1, then you get this, you get 0 0.4654. I just skipped the step, lah, huh? so you do it through one by one. n negative d2 is equal to 1 minus n d2. So this will give you 0 0.5252. So 
So having this, you replace into the put formula. What is the put formula? P okay, equals to K and negative D2 exponential RT minus spot and negative D1 exponential QT. So replace it one by one. Okay, replace it one by one. 700 strike and negative D2 is 0 0.5252. R just now is given to you 0 0.07. Um, 0 0.25 minus the spot of 696 times 0 0.4654 exponential the Q is 0 0.04 and 0 0.25 so you get your P here your P is $40.60 okay so with $40.60 you can find your C C equals to $40.60 plus your spot 696 exponential 0 0.04 times 0 0.25 minus your strike 700 exponential 0 0.07 times 0 0.25 so the call you will get $41.82 after so long this is the answer that you're hunting for Okay, so far, any questions? Sir? Okay, any questions? Come, no, no issues. All good. All right, that seems to be good. I think you all are very good already. That means uh, replacement cost only to attend the reading.